G'day, here's another video on the Roden Schwartz CMU200 or CRTU analyzers. Today we're going to look at how to do the self tests. What you'll need for this is two short leads to connect one to connect RF1 to RF4 and the other to connect RF2 to RF3. They should be as short as possible and they need to be good, the leads need to be uh, RF good to, to at least 3 gigahertz. Um, it will be doing these tests. Now you'll note on the CMU200 you won't have the built in splitter like this. I think it's got a speaker up here instead. But anyway they're both the same internally. So let's have a look. So from the main menu, so into the main menu, we go across and we will select maintenance we're in the maintenance screen. If you hit select you'll see there's um, a few quite a few drop downs here. This is where all the uh, self tests are done. The main self test is the or the main one that I look at to check that the input output ports is correct is the loopback test, test that we see here. So we'll select that. To run the test we press the test and we press go. Now the first thing this is going to do is check loop back 1 to 4. So it's checking at each frequency this path here. And you'll see on my analyzer I fail these tests because it has a problem in the import, sec import section. <coughs> it's possibly the this is the input 1 port and it could be that this has been, <coughs> excuse me, the attenuator has been overdriven, which has weakened the attenuator. It could also just be an aging problem. Now, if you want to see more for this test that's just run, hit the report button and you'll notice the blue comes around here. You can now use the encoder to scroll through each one of them and you'll see that it's which ones are error and which ones are okay. So at 960 megahertz it expected minus 75 dBm and it measured minus 73.2. In the, the setup of the analyzer that was a pass, it's in black. When it's in red that's outside the tolerance level. Everything, all electronics, aid, uh, well the values of most electronics components will vary with age and you have to remember these analyzers were <coughs> excuse me 2000 2003 up to 2012 so we're really looking at you know you could be looking at a 20 year old analyzer so for me I'm not actually too concerned because with I can see when I when I run through these that you know I have it's expecting 55 okay so it got 50 Eight. Is that 58? It's hard to see with the phone, sorry. Um, I'm not too concerned about that for the for ham radio use. If I was in a lab, yes, I would definitely get that fixed up. But for me, you know, I'm, I'm quite okay. Now, if it was expecting here, um, minus 75, and it got like minus 50, well then I've got a problem. But at minus 70, I'm not too worried about it. Um, and what it would pay to do is to have a look and make sure that the variances that you see are within acceptable, your acceptable parameters. All right, so what we've just done is the, <coughs> excuse me, what we have just done is the test on the 1 to 4 port. To get the test to do the 2 to 3 port, we press the enter button, which you'll note underneath here has got um, cont halt. So that means continue or halt. So we're going to continue the test, and we will now note that 3 to 2 is being tested. And on my analyzer, um, it passes everything on the 3 to 2. And we can see that it comes down and it says that it's passed. I can still go into the report screen. And I can wind it all the way back and have a look at each one of the tests that we've done. 
on these external loopback tests and you can see the summary for my 1 to 4 path has failed. Alright, now there's some other tests that we can do. Um, we just hit select and there's quite a range of tests here. Um, System info will just report information about the system. Um, if we press this button here and go OK, we can see the information. So what this runs through, it sees what software is installed and what hardware is installed. It looks at the complete list of all the CMU accessories um, and it works through and identifies what is installed and what is not installed. The same way you can come through uh, to, to actually read the list, you just hit the report button and we can whip back in and it will give us a, as we're scrolling through, you can see what has been installed. Uh, and I think it does give, yeah, it just gives you, tells you what's what's in, in there. So we can see here, for example, this the, I know the B11, B12, this is the, the um, reference, the high stability reference and it tells you the high stability B12 is installed in this one. Uh, for the RX TX1 DG, I'm not too sure what that is, but obviously it's Model 14 is installed. And for these other ones, you can see these are these are modules within modules, and it tells you what has been installed. Um, so that's like a deep look into the analyzer, what's got what's going on inside. Um, the system identity. Um, this is again, we can run this and have a look. Um, all it's going to do is show that a couple of files have been written. And if you go into the file system, you can read those two files. Um, and it will give you software version and some other bits and pieces that that are useful to uh, uh, from a servicing point of view. Continuous self-test would be used if you wanted to um, to leave the test, the analyzer running overnight. Mate, perhaps yours might be faulting once once a week or something like that, well you could leave it running overnight and this will just run the system self-test continuously. So the system self-test, this one here, will look at each individual module and we'll run that now and it starts off and it does the it does each the RXTX board front end and it will go through and do every installed module. Now this is going to take a bit of time with my machine because it's quite loaded. We've got um, uh, all, all sorts of options built uh, I've installed in this machine so it's going to take it a long time so I won't bore you with with that. Needless to say is it does basic tests on all the modules but it doesn't do any um, RF path tests. Then we have the internal loopback paths, which is basically, um, this is the front end module, <coughs> excuse me, the RF loopback, uh, the RF comes in and out via these ports, and there's also some ports at the rear if you have the auxiliary um, generator, analyzer generator installed as an option in yours. Some of them did have. Um, what this is, this test is going to do is going to check to make sure that the loopback paths here plus in the IF strip um, are working okay and it's quite a quick test to run and you just press enter and it does the same sort of three same sort of thing it will test at every frequency now again this is one that there's two loopback paths that it will test um, again this is path one now, if you want to do path two, you press the continue, and it will do the path two. I'm pretty sure there's only path two paths, and it's telling us here that this has failed on mine. And I think if I hit report, I think I've just found my. I will see it's failed on one frequency here at 500 megahertz. Uh, what else has it failed at? Any others? Oh yeah, it's failed at again 500 megahertz at this frequency at this power level. So I bet we find another 500 megahertz. Yes, and another 500 megahertz. Okay, that's interesting. That says to me that um, one of my connectors inside the analyzer. Pro I'm thinking the fault with my analyzer is uh, when I was last in there, I may not have done one of these nuts up properly on these SMA connectors, so it could be as simple as that. Um, it just shows you how important it is to check your work, I guess. 
anyway, okay, well that's good to know. Um, so you can see how the test, what I'm getting at is the internal loopback test, test tested this path, these paths down here. They didn't test these. That was the external paths that we did first off. So now I know that it's the fault is in my analyzer is more likely to be around here. I know where to go looking inside the analyzer. So that's how these these um, self tests can help you out. Uh, what else have we got? We've got um, get into focus. Right. Oh, focus. Sorry, people. Right. Um, oh, that was the test we did before. Okay, so these these tests here are testing each of the different boards singularly. Now, this test here tested all of those together. Now we're testing the individual boards, and I believe this does a fraction more than what the combined test does. And you, I mean, you can just run them, um, just select it, and go OK. And run it, and it's doing the test, and you can see the different things that it's looking for on that on that board. It's looking for different voltage levels, and it's reporting it back to you. Um, and it will tell you if it's passed or failed. And it's a great way of finding out if any of your boards are faulty in the in the uh, analyzer. Um, so we'll have a look here. Um, this is a quite a good one um, that I always that I do run before. If I'm selling it, or if I'm doing my analyzer up, if it, if it needs a general maintenance, I'll always run the, the modulation calibration. And it's a simple um, it asks you to put a uh, this might fail because I've still got my connectors on the front panel. Um, it's telling them to make sure that all the connections should be removed. Um, and this will update the calibration tables for it. As you can see, it's not failing, so I will rerun this without the cables on. But it, with holding a camera and trying to get these cables off is going to be a nightmare at the moment, so we won't do that. Okay, so this is actually um, writing tables within the uh, analyzer to. Uh, and we can see it's this is going to take a long time. The CMU B21 is an option in here, which uses an, uh, uh, um, another processor, and it um, it's mainly for GSM and WCDMA type type work. So we won't bother waiting for that to do that. It's going to take ages. Um, correction filter calibration. I don't have the. That this needs an accessory to do that. I don't have that accessory. Um, you're best to look at your documentation on that. Um, and that's pretty much the only other ones you need to look at. Um, uh, that is the B83, which is another option, which takes ages to look at. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about running any of these. Um, the main ones, as I've said, is the system self-test, the internal loopback test, and the 1432 RF external loopback test, this one here. Um, they're the main things you should be looking at to, um, to check that your analyzer is in good health. Anyway, that was just, I guess, more of a general discussion on um, how to get into the, uh, the maintenance screen and have a look at uh, whether your analyzer is functioning okay or not. Okay, that's all for now. Cheers.